All right, let's call the meeting to order here. I want to welcome everyone to the Town of Manager Planning Board meeting. You will help me uh, rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Myron has agreed to offer invocation again this evening. Amen. Thank you, Myron. All right. Yeah, we just push that button there. All right. Has anyone had a chance to review the minutes from the April 11th meeting? Yes. All right. Uh, anyone have a motion to approve or any questions or comments about those? I'll make a motion to approve. All right. All in favor? Good, that's unanimous. All right, anyone had a chance to, to review the uh, the agenda for tonight's meeting? Any questions, comments, or motions? I think the agenda looks good. I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda. All right, all in favor? Mm -hmm. well, that is unanimous. Lee, was that you in favor of that? Mm -hmm. Lee was. All right, here we go. All right, unanimous. All right, and we'll get on to new business, and we have a new uh, planning director here, Jeffrey Jones, and welcome you to the planning board meeting, and welcome to the town of Anger. Thank you, Chair, and to the board of Anger. A little about myself, um, Robert. A little bit about myself. Um, so I've been in the planning business for well over 20 years. I have experience in Holly Springs and Fuquay. I was with Holly Springs for 11 years. During their growth time, uh, I was with Fuquay prior to, to being in Holly Springs. Um, after I left Holly Springs, I was planning director in Pittsburgh for five years. And then I was, uh, during the pandemic, I went private and worked for a law firm. And most recently for an engineering firm. Um, but I'm happy to be back in Anger. I live not far from here, 20 minutes from here, so it's it's nice. It feels like home. It feels like Holly Springs was 20 years ago when I was there uh, starting out. Um, and so there's a lot of growth happening in, in Anger. It's funny, we're, we're going to have a 55 bypass. So does Holly Springs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and the growth and commercial that has um, come up on our 55 bypass in, in Holly Springs will most likely happen here as well. So as it is, we have growth coming and we have a request for a rezoning tonight. Um, so let's get to it. All right, so good evening, Chair and members of the board. Tonight we have a request um, from Austin Gardner to rezone pro approximately 28.357 acres located along NC 210 east of Anger have to mm -hmm. sort of remember to go through the screen here. There we go. So this is the property. Um, it's located along uh, East NC 210 uh, or NC 210 North and is um, North Harnett School Road. So the property's in blue. There's three properties there. That's the properties that are on for request tonight. That picture is not correct. So look at your, your packet for an aerial, but the property is vacant. Um, again, it's 28.37 acres. Access would be off of NC 210 and North Harnett School Road. Surrounding land uses are agricultural, the primary school, and low-density residential. Um, the property is currently not within the town's corporate limits, nor ETJ. An annex annexation petition has been filed and the town board held a public hearing last week and continued that hearing until the July 5th board meeting. Um, they wanted to make sure that the, the zoning and the rec recommendations from you all was had, was available for them to be able to make a recommendation. And we really can't annex without a zoning that goes along with it. Um, currently the property is zoned Harnett County R30. The request is to 
Um, zone the property R10. The zoning ordinance designates the R10 uh, zoning classification as medium density residential and a variety of um, residential uses and ancillary non-residential uses would be allowed in the R10 um, zoning district. Land use compatibility. Um, currently, the property is not um, in our future land use. The property has been not given a designation from the town of Andrew. However, this parcel does lie in a proposed urban service area that the towns of Andrew and Lillington, along with the county, have discussed as sort of making a, a line in the, in the earth that this is where Anger will grow, this is where Lillington will grow, and this is where the county will serve with their water and sewer. Um, the town of Anger, if the town of Anger were to have this urban service area um, agreement with Lillington and, and the county, the property along um, NC highways would be classified under a denser classification than low density particularly when served by public water and sewer. Um, so. I'm sorry, did you say the, the town of Andrew or the county was covering the water and sewer? Yeah, so that's part of the, the staff report as well. So typically we would, um, when lands are brought into town limits via annexation, the town is compelled by state law to mm -hmm. serve those newly uh, annexed properties with municipal services, including water and sewer. In this case, this uh, property is two and a half miles out of town, so it's it's a long run for for the for the town to to have water and sewer. However, Harnett Regional Water and Sewer has lines and availability in this in this part of the county, and during, in in the agreement of urban service area. Um, the town, along with Harnett Regional Water, would come to an agreement um, to allow them to serve properties where we can't get to at the moment. Um, now, again, that, that agreement has it's been in the works for a year or more. It is not uh, something that is currently approved by any entity, but it is on the table. And thinking that we're progressing down that, that path, this would be in the town of Andrews urban service area and would, you know, be served by Andrew municipal services. However, we would have an, a separate agreement for the Harnett Regional to, to serve this. Um, so again, thinking about the request, the town land use plan for areas of similar characteristics, again, along NC highways, areas where we have public water and sewer, the rezoning request would not have an unreasonable impact on the surrounding community, will not harm public safe, health, safety, and general wealth, welfare. For the reasons stating in the evaluation, staff's recommendation is for you all to consider approving this request. Um, my recommendation is predicated on Harnett Regional Water serving this development with water and sewer. Um, an R10 development without water and sewer is, is not possible. You can't have R10 lots with septic. You most, most likely would have to have at least R20, R30. Um, so that, that would not uh, be something that would be feasible without the, the agreement with Harnett Regional Water. Um, if, you, if you look at how Lillington is growing, they're really close to this area too. I don't know if y'all kind of looked at the maps and Google Maps and th saw what was happening. It's, it's really close to Lillington's ETJ or their corporate limits, their satellite um, annexations that they've, they've created. And what Lillington is doing with their rezonings and their um, developments is, is high den higher densities than R30. It's, I mean, some, some of them have you know, townhome lots, which are 1,600 square feet, um, which is essentially the, the unit itself. Um, so, you know, sort of evaluating areas 
adjacent to this, not necessarily immediately adjacent, but within a mile or so of this request, there are similar styles of development of R10 um, in, in that area. Um, but definitely would entertain any questions from you all. Don Curry with Curry Eng Engineering, who is the engineer for the applicant, is here, and he can answer any questions that you all may have as well. Um, and again, I'm here to answer anything you got. So you are fairly comfortable that the agreement will get done? Um, I have put the request that the agreement gets done, whether it's the urban service agreement. Now, that's a sort of a big ticket item that lots of folks have to agree to. That may not get done, but an agreement between the applicant and Harnett Regional Water to serve this project will need to be done prior to July 5th. And, and the applicant is aware of that, and they're working towards that. Um, as far as Andrew will still be any water, providing any water won't come out of the Andrew town, town of Andrew's pocket. That's right. So Andrew right. will not serve this, this community with water or sewer. Um, we will not collect any, you know, utility rates or bills. Um, bills will come from Harding Regional to these new residents. We will provide, you know, other municipal services such as police and fire and, um, you know, trash and things like that as a typical town would. If the agreement doesn't go through, what would be? I think the... that's where the town board needs to consider delaying the annexation of this property. Um, when you annex property in North Carolina as a town, you are agreeing to serve that property with utilities okay. um, and municipal services. And we as a town, I'm not sure we're ready at this moment to serve this property mm -hmm. this far out of town. Um, it's a unique situation that we have in Harnett County where the county in and of itself is a, is a utility provider. It's usually, in most instances, it's towns and cities that are providers of water and sewer. It's pretty rare that a county would be the ones who sort of be, would be able to handle that. So it's, it's unique. Um, this rezoning is unique. I, I definitely grilled the applicant as to what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it has to have municipal or in this case county water and sewer for this to happen and we have to have this agreement um, for it to happen your recommendation could caveat as we recommend X as long as it is an agreement to serve municipal utilities for this project that could be an, a, a recommendation from you all yeah. that, that's the board hearing you say, okay, but it only works if we have utilities. Mm -hmm. This zoning does not work if you don't. Um, yeah. Because to clarify, if we approve this tonight, and then let's say for some reason the agreement doesn't go through, which I think just given the history of the way the growth is going, and you know, it, it should go through, but let's say it doesn't. But then this would stay R10 permanently moving forward for other projects to come through. No, so the, no? Okay. the unique thing is what we're doing tonight is you all are recommending to the town board. Okay. And so your recommendation is that you've kind of went through and there's a set of criteria in the packet and mm -hmm. that I'll put up on the screen that you all have made a conscious decision that, you know, an effort to go through the criteria to say, yes, this is okay. You may, you may go through the criteria and you say, may not. So we haven't got to that point yet. Um, but no, your recommendation is just that, and the board can, the board really can't zone it without annexing. And they won't really have a positive recommendation on annexation from mm -hmm. the town manager and myself unless that utility agreement is, is in place. That's great, okay. So maybe that it just gets kicked down the road until... There's you know, more if, pieces if, in place with the water right. so aspect. If, if the agreement, for whatever reason, is not 
fair on July 5th. I, I do believe that the town manager will recommend to his town board we need to pause this because we cannot be held to state law that says this the town of Anger has to serve this with municipal water and sewer. Um, you know, could we as a town negotiate with Harnett Regional? Yes, we could and try to make this work. That's what would happen if we by chance annexed it and we had to serve it. Um, but we want to. We want the applicant to sort of take the lead initially on this. This is their project. We want them to succeed. Uh, but this is something they need to sort of take lead on for for a little while. And for, forgive me for asking this, just because I want a clarification. Um, I didn't see anything about the planned usage of the land. And is it my understand? Is my understanding correct that we are not to consider what the usage is Correct. if known right during so this process this is a general use rezoning request so you would have to consider all the uses within the r10 designation okay. generally those are residential in nature which include single family town home multi-family okay. um, and then ancillary uses such as churches and schools those things are, are allowed in r10 uh, but yes sam you're correct we we if if Mr. Curry gets up and says, we're going to build the best subdivision out there. You really, it's great, but you all should not consider that. However, and this is a sort of educational time, if the applicant had come in with a conditional zoning and said, I am going to build X and I am placing these conditions on myself and we are going to approve it as presented, then yes, you would then be able to consider the the project in and of itself. It does make me happy that it's proposed R10. Yeah. So yeah, R6 would be a, right. So, uh, that would be a nice. lot to in that area. Uh, trust me, R10 was was something I was scratching my head on for a couple of days, and I'm sure Mr. Curry could could tell you that. Could you jog remember What's the minimum lot size on R10? Ten thousand square feet. Ten thousand. Okay. Yes. Which is essentially a quarter of an acre. If you Thank think you. of an acre, <laughs> really <laughs> like I'm sitting here going, oh, I really need like that would an really help me. An acre is forty-three thousand five hundred sixty uh, square feet. Kind of so um, small yes, a tenth, a quarter of an acre, um, lots. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Y'all want to. Uh, Hear from Mr. Curry? Sure. Let's have yeah, sure. I'd like to. Hear. Maybe he'll get to tell us a little bit about what they're doing there. The actual applicant isn't here tonight. Is that right? He's his representative. Okay, he's representative. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Don Curry with Curry Engineering, 205 South Fuquay Avenue in Fuquay Marina. And on behalf of the applicant, um, we appreciate your consideration for this rezoning request. Uh, as Mr. Jones mentioned, um, we have initiated contact and coordination with Harnett Regional Water. Um, and while this is maybe new to Anger, it's not completely unique within Harnett Regional Water service area framework. Um, they do this for other municipalities as well. Coates is an example. Um, so we would uh, coordinate with them and make sure that we have that nailed down for water and sewer service. The, the, the utilities are right on the property, so it makes sense for that to happen. Um, and I, I talked to Glenn McFadden and Steve Ward about it already. Um, they're in favor of it. At, they're both at Harnett Regional Water. Talked to Jimmy Cook about it, your public utilities director. Um, he has no problem with it either. Um, as mentioned, there is a, a, a USA agreement in the works, but this would kind of precede that because we're on a, a little bit of a different timeline. Um, but that onus would be on us to coordinate that um, with, with the town's endorsement, which it sounds like. Um, everybody is fine with us moving in that direction. Um, certainly pending a uh, positive rezoning, but um, that's our that's our desire. So, um, but the the property is uh, is is a is a great piece of property. I feel like it is cons the rezoning request is consistent with the neighboring properties, um, and so we we really appreciate your consideration of it. I'm glad to answer any questions you might have, um, but I just wanted to say that that much of it at least. So. 
Thank you. So procedurally, if I may, in terms of if we if we were to grant the the rezoning approval tonight here from this board, once it's re once it's actually annexed, if it is annexed at the next board of commissioners meeting, those two would come together. You wouldn't have to go back and so the, do it again. Um, the town board kept open the the annexation, so that's that public hearing is going to continue on the July fifth meeting. And there actually will be a public hearing on the rezoning at the July 5th meeting as well. Okay. So folks in the neighborhood, neighboring properties, they'll get noticed, they'll be able to come and voice their, you know, concerns or opinions or think this is good. So on the July 5th meeting, the town board will hear from the public and they will make a determination based off of that, based off of staff, based off of you all okay. and your recommendations. So that's sort of their bucket, their toolbox that they go to is public hearing, staff, and then you all uh, recommendation, and then they make a decision based off of all that and probably other factors as well. Yeah, and it, that helps clarify in terms of the re they're looking at basically the rezoning and the annexation sort of at the same time. Yeah, the typically meeting. how Andrew has handled things in the past, you all probably weren't aware of, of uh, concurrent annexations and, and zonings that were occurring at the same time. Um, for you all and for me, I, I think it was like my first or second day we were supposed to have a planning board meeting in May and we canceled that that meeting because I didn't know quite where anything was. So <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't have this available for you all to make a consideration. Right. Um, my goal would always be to have things to you all, um, you know, at least a week or so in advance for your consideration and study. Um, I just couldn't pull it together. And so we had to, we, y'all don't normally see that, that pattern, but things normally run concurrently and, and your recommendation would go right along with the, with the annexation. So the town board saw, saw that it was valuable to open the public hearing last week, keep it open allow folks to speak on both, both the annexation and the rezoning at the mm -hmm. July 5th meeting, and then close the public hearing and then make their determination based off of all the things that they've heard. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. Are we ready for the standards of review? Or yeah, I think y'all, yeah. this is sort of unique to Andrew, and y'all have, y'all know this better than I do. Um, but you have standards of review. This is sort of you've evaluated st staff's report, your knowing of, of the area, you know, questions and comments from the applicant, and then you go through and you, you, make, um, you make your determinations on these. Okay? All right. And then I'm here for any questions that y'all have. All right. I'm going to run through the standards of review, and then we'll uh, vote on each one. If you'll turn, it's on page four or five. You've got it at the back of there, so make sure if you want to read along. Um, and the the first uh, standard is the proposal will place all property similarly similarly situated in the area in the same category or in appropriate complementary categories. All in favor? Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Unanimous. There is convincing demonstration that all uses permitted under the proposed district classification would be in the general public interest and not merely in the interest of the individual or small group. All in favor? That's unanimous. There is convincing demonstration that the character of the neighborhood will not be materially and adversely affected by any use permitted in the proposed change. All in favor? All right, that's unanimous. And the last one, the proposed change is in accordance with the comprehensive plan and sound planning practices. All in favor? Looks like that is also unanimous. All right, we have granted the rezoning request the extent that it goes in conjunction with the annexation. Thank you. All right, thank you. Do we have any old business? business tonight. All right, if there's no old business, then I will adjourn the meeting. Nice to have you at the town of Anger. Thanks everyone for coming. Mm -hmm.